Good morning. Chosan. Can you hear me in the back? Um, first of all, I'd like to thank Thompson and the Hong Kong Retail Management Association for the very kind invitation um, to come here and speak. Uh, it's an absolute uh, pleasure and a privilege to be here. Um, so what I would like to do uh, to, to start is to share a very short video that I think encapsulates what our brand is about and it also shares a little bit about the future of, of our company. Um, I would like to just uh, say that the video is in English. We usually share this video internally, so we only have it in, uh, in Chinese with uh, simplified characters uh, when we share it with our mainland teams. So I hope you enjoy it. As you can see, we're very busy people, um, and we've been busy for many years as well. Uh, Lane Crawford has been uh, around for over 167 years, and we're probably one of the oldest companies in Hong Kong. Um, there's, there's probably very few of these. And, um, and, and what's interesting is uh, for a company to survive uh, and be successful for so long, one of the key things that is core uh, to our company is the fact that we're always moving on, we're always, we're always embracing change, we're always um, moving with times, and even though we've been many, many different things over the years, you know, we've been tailors, outfitters, uh, provisions dealers, we own restaurants and bars, we've been being a baker, um, and yet, uh, with, you know, even though products and people come and go, 
the brand remains the constant. And we're always focused on customers and building great relationships and trust. Um, what I would like to do is to share, because we have such a rich history, I'd like to share some key points in our history. You know, we could spend hours talking about this, but let's just share a few. Um, and, and one of them is in 1945, after the Second World War, um, we actually had a, a, a point where the company almost didn't continue to, to, to exist. And there was a gentleman called uh, Andrew Walton Brown, which I believe today is uh, one of the pre platinum sponsors uh, through the company that comes from, from, from his name. Um, he was responsible for forging new uh, relationships with international brands to continue to bring great products to our market here in Hong Kong. And that, re and that was a pivotal moment for the company to continue to be successful and to survive. Um, in 2004, we also had another pivotal moment where we actually replaced and brought around 80% of products and brands that were new to Lynn Crawford. And we moved from a model of being a, a, a real estate player and had concessions to actually owning the products. So we bought products. Uh, we had all these new products that were not just top designer fashion brands, but also products for the home and cosmetics products and so on. So it was a very lifestyle concept. Uh, it was a very large space for us in IFC. This was uh, one of the things that uh, we did uh, with, our, with our partner in IFC. And, uh, and we were an anchor tenant there to create something very special. That was The whole mall was, was around this, the lifestyle concept. And in addition to this, we actually created something that was beyond retail, which was essentially providing service and experiences that were uh, complementary to the product offering. So we had, uh, we created a, a VIP suites, uh, we uh, hired personal stylists to provide very personal services to our most important customers. Uh, we also uh, created uh, the concept of concierge, so we could actually help our clients book restaurants and, uh, and do many other things that we, we would normally not do. So that really was very important. And at the time, we also had uh, uh, exited all our presence that we had in China, uh, we, we originally had franchise partners and we decided to um, uh, come out of that and try and create something that we could actually operate ourselves. And once we, uh, once we operated the IFC mall concept, for a while we started extending it to our, all our stores in Hong Kong and then we felt that we could go back to China and, and continue to operate with a new concept. And that's when we opened the store in 2007 in Beijing. Now, more recently, and again, I'll share with you some of the things that we've done in the last five or six years, just to, have an, just to give you an idea of how that new lifestyle and, and beyond retail, you know, through all this service and experience evolved more recently. In 2011, we launched Lenkrofo.com, which at the time, even though we only offered women's wear products, um, it was actually very advanced for when we did it at the time, because uh, we actually offered uh, not just the products to be available there, but it was actually a, web a website that was global. Uh, so we offered multi-currency and multi-language. Uh, we also offer same-day delivery uh, services uh, in Hong Kong and in Beijing. We offered free return service. You could take the, your items to the stores, or we could actually come and collect them from you. Um, and also, we had a customer care service that actually spoke in three languages. You could speak English, Cantonese, and Mandarin. And obviously, this was very important for us as well in the sense that once we're online, we're able to reach a much wider audience. And like I said before, we were able to also deepen our relationship with customers through product browsing and content generation. People's, people were able to engage with us in different ways. Um, as I said before, we exited uh, at, uh, at some point in the past from China, then we re-entered through Beijing, and as we felt confident that we were building a model that worked, we further expanded into China by opening another store in Beijing, which is a small format, um, and also we opened stores in Shanghai and Chengdu. Um, again, online has always been a complementary part of our business, whereby we are not necessarily obsessed about selling online, we want people to be able to engage with us however they want. And so, in particular in China, 
This gives us an opportunity for people to also be able to buy things from us wherever they are, given that it's such a large geography. Um, one of the things we did at this time as well was that um, all the inventory that we had available uh, online was actually not just coming from a, 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 a ring fence pot of inventory for online. We actually shared the inventory with stores as well. And even though we didn't have the full product offer, this was actually already happening for any products that were available online. So we didn't have to have uh, any boundaries across the board. And this was in Hong Kong and China. Moving forward, 2014, we saw mobile usage going through the roof. So we decided to invest further in technology to make our website responsive across devices. So originally, we didn't have uh, any uh, ability to optimize. But at the same time, uh, you, even though you could see the website on different devices, it wasn't really optimized. So we thought it was really important to do this. Um, and also, uh, the key thing here, again, is to put the customer at the center. You know, customers were not experiencing Lane Crawford in the way they, they, they wanted or in the best possible way. So again, sometimes these investments were driven by the desire of serving the customer and giving an experience that was really great. And again, there's a small thing that we started to introduce here. This was a very small um, uh, uh, step towards uh, starting to merge online and online further, which was essentially the ability for customers to add products through, to their wish list. And then when they came to the stores, they were able to share this wish list with uh, our, our members of our staff to be able to shop things in the store. Um, it's, it's something that we, we thought you know, was important to start doing and also to start engaging our own internal staff around this. So we move forward again, 2015, and at this point, we were able to actually have a much larger assortment online. Um, and in addition to this, we were finally able to have full visibility of customers across the board. So we had one customer was a link for customer, no longer a customer from the website or from one of the stores or anything like this. And what we were able to do at that point was to also digitize our loyalty card. This was actually, uh, uh, we, when we did this, we actually offered the ability for customers to collect their gift cards as they earn points digitally as well. And again, this was actually very, very challenging to do internally because we had um, some concerns around digital gift cards fl fl flying around, and uh, we didn't know if there were any fraud concerns or any, any, any issues around protecting our, protecting our customers' security. So we actually did a lot of work to test this and to make sure that everything was working well. You can also see that um, as we move forward, we further blurred the boundaries. And because we had the ability to see customers across the board, and also we had the ability to see inventory across the board, we started showing um, the, the availability of items across the stores. So customers who were actually looking at the website before going to the store were able to see if their items were available in different places and they could actually plan their shopping trips. This was also something that internally we had uh, some concerns because we're, we didn't want to uh, discourage people from going to the stores um, because if they wanted a particular item and you couldn't see that it was available, that may prevent you from going to the store. But actually we thought customers can still call and find out if the item is available. So actually we took the courage to say, let's make this available, let's be transparent, let's help the customer do what they want to do and feel confident that this was going to work anyway. And that's basically why we did it. Put the customer at the center again. Um, we also launched a, a new POS system that is mobile. It's actually responsive, so it works across devices as well. And it's the one on the right. Um, and basically, when customers arrive, we're able to scan their loyalty cards so we can see who they are. And we can also scan products. And we actually use the same information that we have on the website for the products. Um, so basically, we're able to see the same thing across the board. And another thing that we did was to launch um, WeChat uh, internal account 
to be able to also share information with our staff about all of the things that are happening uh, across different points in time uh, at Lane Crawford. And this was actually very important as well because we actually are able to share uh, many things like new products, uh, we have events up and coming, it could be incentives, it could be many, many things. And uh, just to show you an example, sometimes we find products that we sell that celebrities are wearing. So actually we share this with our staff uh, because it may be uh, a, a good uh, conversation point with some of our customers. And it's also exciting to see that some of the things that we, sh that we sell are worn by celebrities. So this year has been very, 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 very busy, actually. We uh, started the year with uh, completing binding. Uh, so now uh, any customer who, has a, who follows us and binds their account, they can see their details uh, through WeChat. WeChat is a very important tool, as, as you will know, in China. And so we want to make sure that we're present there because our customers absolutely love this tool. We use it primarily for communications, even though people can shop as well. Um, we actually launched our mini program uh, a little over a week ago. So it's very, very new. Um, and people are also able to shop within WeChat very seamlessly through WeChat Pay. And if they're binded already, they don't need to basically do anything. They just uh, check out very, very, very seamlessly. Uh, and finally, we launched our mobile app, which is also global. It's obviously optimized for any, all of the different markets that we operate in, which is primarily Greater China. Customers are able to see their profile as well. The digital card is also embedded, so not only can you add it to your wallet, but you can also see it on your profile, and you can just scan this in the stores, um, and people can recognize you and provide you more, more personal service. And one thing we've just introduced is literally a week ago, which we're very, very excited to have been able to, to achieve, is that you can actually scan products in the stores um, and so if you want to look at additional details that we have on, on, on the website, you can actually look at that whilst you're in the store. And if you can decide that you want to shop at that point in time, you can save in your wish list and you can come back at a different time or you can order it online or however you want, basically. We're helping customers to uh, simplify their lives. So we have all these different things that we've done over the years. And we just wanted to show you what, how all these different things can help a customer who has a wedding to attend. She needs to buy a pair of shoes. Um, she's in her mid-20s. She's one of her uh, very valuable, valuable customers. And she's very fashion forward. So she's very busy. So one day she starts looking at her website. And she looks for shoes. She needs high heels. She finds, a, she finds a pair that she likes. She checks her size and the availability by store. And she finds uh, that they're available in different stores. So she lives she, her work is closer to Canton Road. So she calls um, uh, her personal stylist and asks for an appointment because she wants to try the shoes in the store. She goes to the store. She tries the shoes. And the personal stylist at this point knows that she's going to a wedding, so she, he also shares some ideas of dresses that she may like. So she tries a few dresses, and there's two dresses that she particularly likes, but she's not convinced that she wants to buy them at that point. So she opens her app, Link Crawford app, and she scans the QR code and saves the two, the two dresses in her wish list. So she pays for the shoes and she goes home. A few days later, she's about to go to work and after trying some of her existing dresses uh, with the new shoes, she's not convinced about her outfit. So she recalls that she had saved some items in her wish list, so she decides to buy one of the items online and she, she asks for that to be delivered at her house. So with that, 
after a minute or so of buying this, she goes to work. And when she comes back from work, her dress is delivered at home. So like a present for herself. And then she goes to the wedding. She receives many compliments. She's looking great. And she managed to achieve what she wanted. So this is just an example of the things that we are able to do. Of course, the, the journeys today, especially with so many touch points, are becoming very, very challenging. It's very complex to manage from us internally, but also the customer has so many choices to do things the way they want. Ultimately, that's what we want, is to allow customers to shop the way they want. So some of the benefits that we're seeing, the main thing that we're seeing is over 60% of customers who go to the store will visit one of the digital touch points before going to the store. You can almost predict that if a customer is looking at something online, they will actually do something after relating to the store. And so we feel very confident that you know, very early on from 2011, deciding that online was not just about selling stuff online, but actually helping customers be successful was a very good decision to make. And this has helped us be very successful in our stores. We continue to drive traffic and engagement. And what we see as well is that the minute a customer has one of our digital touch points, they will actually spend more. And if they go all the way to actually shopping and buying across online and offline, this is when they become the most valuable ones. And they spend five times more than a single channel customer. And what's exciting, something that we've seen over the years, is that this particular customer segment that shops across online and offline is the fastest growing one. So as you can see, we continue to work very, very hard to continue to earn our tr the trust of our customers. Um, we work very hard to build relationships with our customers. We want to make sure they're successful. Um, and so one of the things, when we reflect on our heritage and our history, and as I said to you at the beginning, we, uh, we are always moving on. We're always doing things, in many cases, that are the first time ever. So one of the themes that we see in our, in our DNA is leadership. Um, and we are working very hard to guide and shape and inspire and illuminate, um, um, which um, we actually call internally, we want to be the leading lights of luxury. Um, again, to um, create a new world of luxury for people to experience. Um, we continue to challenge ourselves to do things that are new, that are, have never been done before. We have many learnings. We, we have lots of different challenges, but we absolutely love doing things that are new, and we will continue to do that to help everyone be excited to be part of the Lane Crawford family. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. Um, I don't know if I have time to take one or two questions now. Otherwise, uh, there'll be a panel discussion later, and we'll be able to take questions then.